This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1349, The Elusive Budget and Why You Should Have One, by Lance LaCroix of LaCroixFinancialCoaching.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is a show where I serenade you with the sweet sounds of personal finance knowledge from some of the best blogs on the planet, with the author's permission, of course. This show is actually one of six shows in our network covering different topics like personal development, health, and relationships. So if you like narration-style podcasts, be sure to search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this and check out our other shows. And I have a brand new author for you today. I'll tell you about him right after the reading. So let's get right to the post and start optimizing your life. The Elusive Budget and Why You Should Have One by Lance LaCroix of LaCroixFinancialCoaching.com Are budgets really that bad? Many people associate the word budget with the idea of restrictions. They don't want to be on a budget because they don't want to go without a blank. A budget would keep them from having fun. I'd like to debunk that myth. There was a time when I didn't bother with a budget. I knew rent from my tiny one-bedroom bachelor pad was $400 per month. It cost $30 every two weeks to fill the tank in my little 2007 Ford Focus hatchback, and my dog's food was $40 every month. As long as I had that covered, I just needed to keep my belly full and my bank account positive. That choice had already set me up for moderate success. I wasn't moving forward, but at least I wasn't moving backward. Eventually, I realized I had to get more serious about my finances. I had been dating a girl for a while and was pretty sure I was going to marry her. Then she dumped me. Can you believe that? No hard feelings, though. We got back together and I decided I needed to marry her before she realized she was way out of my league. I had already asked her dad for his blessing and had received it. Her parents had graciously offered to pay for the wedding, so I was left with the ring and the honeymoon. I wrote down all my expenses on paper, including little things like Netflix, toiletries, etc. I was surprised to find I had quite a bit left. I hadn't realized how much I had been wasting on little insignificant things. It's said that when you get on a budget, you'll feel like you got a raise, and I did. I was able to save for the ring in no time. I found that many people do as I did when I was younger. They try to keep their bank account above zero but don't write anything down. The problem with this is that it leaves very little room for the unknown. If you live paycheck to paycheck, as 78% of working Americans do, always flirting with a bounce check, what will happen when an emergency comes? Did you know that 66% of Americans interviewed in a 2017 career builder study said that they would struggle to cover a $1,000 emergency? I'm relatively young, and even I've faced a few of those, and a few that were much more costly. When you write out your budget monthly, a unique budget every month, it can actually give you quite a bit of freedom. By writing out our budget, my wife and I decide what's important and what's not. We get our basics covered and can plan out larger expenses like vacations, vehicle maintenance, pet adoptions. See, it's not all boring. Because we plan at the beginning of the month, we don't worry at all about money during the month. Another benefit to budgeting is you can plan for the unexpected. My wife and I have an emergency fund in our budget. Every month, we add a little to it until it reaches a certain amount. Then we let it sit untouched and liquid so we can get to it right away. Several months ago, we had the unfortunate need to use that emergency fund. Someone on my wife's side of the family had passed away. We had to call him to work, get on a last-minute flight to the other side of the country, stay a few days to be with her family, and then return home. A couple weeks later, we were back for a memorial service. Because we were gone two separate times and because we were gone for so long, our employer's bereavement policy didn't cover us completely. Thankfully, because we had budgeted and planned for the unexpected, we were able to cover several days without pay and four total round-trip tickets across the country without having to stress. We were able to be with our family mentally, spiritually, and emotionally because we weren't worried about how we're going to make ends meet. From my personal experience, I highly recommend that everyone writes a monthly zero-based budget. Every dollar should have a name. 
Some will say, I don't make enough to need a budget, or I make too much to need a budget, or even I can't budget, I have an irregular income. Listen, I've been hourly, I've been 100% commission, and I've been hourly against commission. I challenge you, give yourselves three months on a written budget. Follow it for three months. If you need to make adjustments, make adjustments, but only if needed. Don't break your budget in the middle of the month because of a new Call of Duty release. Trust me, you can make it to the end of the month without it. I personally use everydollar.com because it's easy to use and it doesn't try to sell me stuff constantly like mint.com. No, I'm not affiliated with them and I don't get anything if you use them. Everydollar.com is free but has a paid option if you want to link your accounts. I use the linked feature now, but I'm glad I used the free version for several months. It forced me to keep track of my spending. It's hard to ignore stupidity when you have to enter every transaction at the end of the day. If all else fails, a yellow pad works too. You just listened to the post titled The Elusive Budget and Why You Should Have One by Lance LaCroix of LaCroixFinancialCoaching.com. And I'll tell you about Lance in just a second, but first, thank you to Netgear. Tis the season to upgrade your Wi-Fi. When you're connected to your world by Wi-Fi, be sure it's the best. Orbi Wi-Fi 6 from Netgear is the gift that keeps on giving. It covers your entire home with the fastest Wi-Fi so you can stream your favorite shows and movies, video chat with family far away, and work and learn from home on more devices than ever before in any part of the house. It's Wi-Fi worth celebrating. Don't miss this holiday season's exclusive offers on the best Wi-Fi ever. Find out what makes Netgear America's number one choice for Wi-Fi at netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. That's netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. And I have that linked in this episode's description. Back to the article today, Lance is a Ramsey Solutions master financial coach trained and endorsed by Dave Ramsey and Chris Hogan. He's here to help you reach your financial goals. He doesn't sell insurance, annuities, or any other financial products. He simply wants to give you unbiased advice. He specializes in coaching couples, small businesses, and individuals. So come check out his site, LaCroixFinancialCoaching.com, and his podcast, Directing Dollars. Big thanks to Lance for letting us share his work. I've used budgets to varying degrees through my financial journey, and I agree with Lance that they can be very freeing versus restrictive. I think budgets can do three things. Number one, build awareness. Number two, create and gamify money goals. And number three, provide reassurances. Before you can start optimizing your spending or figuring out how much you can throw at debt each month, you need to be really clear on how much you're earning and spending. I started by simply accounting for every dollar I spent through a basic tracking app on my phone. The key for me was entering it into the tracking app the moment I spent the money. Once you have enough awareness on where your money is going, you can start challenging yourself. And this is where the gamifying comes in. So right now, I'm challenging myself to keep my discretionary spending below $1,500 per month. Some months are better than others. But when I don't hit that number, you know what happens? Absolutely nothing. It's just a goal I'm striving towards. Nothing will explode if I don't hit that goal. I brush myself off and I try again next month. And finally, tracking your money and budgeting is reassuring. You can clearly see your progress as you're building better habits and working towards your financial goals. I also track my fixed and variable expenses month by month in an Excel spreadsheet. And probably about twice per year, I reevaluate my spending and saving goals by looking at the averages over the last year or so. This helps ensure that I'm setting realistic goals while also keeping my spending in check. That'll do it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits.